Welcome to Electro Online. In order for us to be able to reduce fractions, we have to be familiar with the rules of divisibility. It really helps out. So what we need to do first is understand what the prime numbers are. The prime numbers, at least the small ones, the numbers that can only be divided by themselves and by the number 1, are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so forth. Then there's other numbers for which it's good to know some rules about, and so the numbers 4, 9, and 10, if we know the divisibility, divisibility rules there, that's a hard word to pronounce, then it helps us also to reduce fractions. And here are some examples of numbers that I'm going to use in order to show you what the divisibility rules are. So first of all, the number 2, the smallest prime number. A number is divisible by 2 when the number is an even number, which means that the number ends in a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, or a 0. Examples of that are 42, 36, 28, and for example, the number 40. All those numbers are divisible by 2 because they end up, they end with an even number or the number 0. So all these numbers can be divided by the number 2. To see if a number is divisible by 3, that's a little bit more tricky. There, what we need to do, and here are examples of numbers that are divisible by 3, we need to add the numbers together. Each of the, well, what I mean is each of the digits of the numbers together. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, well, that's equal to 6. And if that sum is, equal, is divisible by 3, then the whole number is divisible by 3. So for example, when we take for the number 3, we add the digits of the number. So if the sum is divisible by 3, question mark, then it's divisible by 3. Then divisible by 3. So we'll do some examples. We have four numbers there to work with. So we'll start with the number 123. If we add the three number, the three digits together, 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's equal to 6. And we can all see that 6 is indeed divisible by 3, which means the number 123 is divisible by 3. The next one, 462. If we add them together, so 4 plus 6 plus 2, that's equal to 12. We know that 12 can be divided by 3, therefore the whole number can be divided by 3. How about 927? So we have 9 plus 2 plus 7, that's 18. And since 18 can be divided by 3, 927 can be divided by 3. And the last example, 315. We have 3 plus 1 plus 5, that's equal to 9. Since 9 can be divided by 3, the whole number can be divided by 3. And so that's how we can very quickly check to see if, an, is a, if a number is indeed divisible by 3. So sometimes you end up with a really big number. For example, let's say we have the number uh, 25,000. Uh, 340, let's see here, 7, 14, uh, 14, uh, 14, like that. Let's say we have a really big number like that. And we're curious to see if that number is divisible by 3. Well, what we can do again, like before, we can add up all the digits. 2 plus 5, so we get 2 plus 5, plus 3, plus 4, plus 4. When we add them all up, we get 18. Now, of course, most of us realize that that number is indeed divisible by 3. But what if we have such a big number we don't know for sure? What we can do is we can then take these numbers here and add them together again. 1 plus 8, that's equal to 9. And we can keep doing that until we have a single digit number. And then we can see if that single digit number is indeed divisible by 3, which in this case it is. That means that the original number from the very beginning is indeed divisible by 3. So if you end up with something really big here, you can continue that process over and over again until you get like a single digit number, and that's how you can check. If we now start with the number 4, again, that's a little bit more tricky as well. Let's say that if a number ends in... And we, we take a look at the last two digits. So it'll be 00, zero or 04, or 08, or 12, or 16, or 20. You can see that. All those numbers are divisible by 4, regardless what comes in front of it. For example, all these numbers. Oh, and then one more rule. If we then add a multiple of 20, for example, 40 plus 4 gives us 44, or 60 plus 8 gives us 68, 
or 60 plus 12 gives us 72, or 60 plus 16 gives us 76. So each case, in this case, we have 40 plus 4, or we have 60 plus 8, or we have 60 plus 12, or we have 60 plus 16, or let's say 60 plus 20. Whenever we add a multiple of 20 to any number like this, and we get these numbers, they're also divisible by 4. So all we have to do is look at the last numbers. So here, for example, 50 is 40 plus 10. Since 10 is not divisible by 4, then 450 is not divisible by 4. So that's kind of the approach we take with the number 4. For the number 5, it's fairly straightforward. It should end either a 0 or a 5. So let's take a look here. 15 ends in a 5, that's divisible by 5. 315, again, it ends in a 5, so it's divisible by 5. And 450 ends in a 0, it's therefore divisible by 5. So next, let's take a look at divisible by 9. So the divisibility rule for 9 is similar to the divisibility rule for the number 3. With the only difference is, whatever number we end with, that number should be divisible by 9. So let's give it a try. Let's try 297. So the number 297, we can write that as 2 plus 9 plus 7. So we add the digits together. That's equal to 18. And if 18 is divisible by 9, then the original number is divisible by 9. You can also tell that it's divisible by 3 because 1 plus 8 is 9, which is divisible by 3 as well. That rule can also work for 9s. So if you take the number 18 and you rewrite it as 1 plus 8 equals to 9, notice if this number is divisible by 9, then the original number is divisible by 9 as well. Let's try one more. Let's try the number 486. So 486. Notice that if we add all the digits together, we get 4 plus 8 plus 6. That's 14 plus 4, which is equal to 18. Since 18 is divisible by 9, the whole number 486 is divisible by 9 as well. And finally, let's see. Well, the number 10, that's fairly straightforward to check to see if we can divide things by the number 10. It has to end up in at least one zero, right? So 50 can be divided by 10, 200 can be divided by 10, 3,000 or 4,150. As long as there's a single zero at the end, we can divide by the number 10. And then the number 11. The number 11 is kind of interesting. If there's only two digits, they have to be the same. 55 and 77, that's divisible by 11. That's pretty straightforward. But what about the number 451 or the number 682? Can we divide those numbers by 11? And it turns out, if you take the first number and the last number and add them together and you get the middle number, then the number is divisible by 11. For example, the number 451, you can say that 1 plus 4 equals 5. You add the 4 plus the 1 together, adds up to the middle number, therefore 451 is divisible by 11. Take the next number, for example, 682. So you can say that 6 plus 2 equals 8. So you add the first and the last number together, you get the middle number. Indeed, it's divisible by 11. So those are some handy rules to know when you start simplifying fractions. If you can think of those rules, you can quickly see if the numerator and the denominator can be divided by the same number, especially when the number is 2, 3, 5, 11, 4, 9, and 10. So that gives you quite a few numbers to play with. That makes it a lot easier to see if the, both the numerator and the denominator can indeed be divided by the same number. And that's how it's done.